Hello beautiful beings and welcome back to the channel. I hope this video helps you grow into the person you want to be and the truth of who you are. Today we're talking about the menstrual cycle, the moon, uh, this thing that so many women go through or have gone through and the way that it is so grossly distorted in our society and within our own gender that we are harming we are harming ourselves and we are also putting ourselves at a serious disadvantage when we could be using this time of the month to an absolute magical advantage in our lives. And I wanna start by saying, I have no business in your personal health or your choices, whether you're taking shots or birth control or you're on a medication or you're taking herbals or whatever you're doing, you make the choices that are best for you. Everyone's spiritual journey looks different. Sometimes the spiritual journey looks like going and getting surgery. <laughs> like listen to your heart and soul and trust and do what you want and what you need to do. I'm here to offer some really big perspectives that I feel personally just appalled by because they're brought up so often and it's so normalized for us as women to gaslight ourselves and each other. I just wanna forget about men right now. Um, the guys are kinda lost in this area and a big part of that is because we're so lost in this area and we're not stepping up to lead the way and demonstrate how beautiful our cycles are and how beautiful it is to be a woman and to have these incredible powers that we have pushed down over time. And you know, there's a lot of past trauma for women uh, from being burned at the stake to being institutionalized for a lot of the emotions that they felt um, during their menstrual cycles. So we are breaking generational uh, trauma and curses here today, ladies. Um, but we have to shed light on this subject that is completely in the dark. I feel like we're on the dark side of the moon right now. <laughs> we need we need to just move over here and see the truth and see the light. And um, I want to start uh, with gaslighting. And gaslighting, many of you know what that is. It's when you're invalidated for your truth and so much so that you're made to doubt yourself. So it's like if this person says, ouch, uh, that rock just fell on my foot and it hurts, the gaslighter would say, that didn't hurt you. That rock didn't fall. Or even worse, ouch, you hit me with a rock and that hurt. I didn't hit you with a rock. That didn't hurt you. You're such a, you're so dramatic. That's gaslighting when you blatantly, you know something and someone or something else is saying, nope. And that happens to all of us throughout our lives at some point, but I wanna focus on where it's happening with women and their menstrual cycles. So the way I see it happening woman to woman is when women are on their cycle and they're like, oh, I feel this way, but I'm, I'm on my period, I'm crazy right now. Or all these videos, oh my God, my heart aches when I see them. And these women are like, oh, guess what? My, I got my period and I realized I'm not a crazy psycho bitch. <laughs> Sorry. It's absolute insanity to me. It's, it's, it's unconsciousness at one of the deepest levels possible. And um, it's really, if you think about it, in that moment, they are gaslighting themselves. They're saying, what I went through wasn't really real, and thank God I'm back to normal. And so it's rejecting that aspect of themselves that is actually trying to heal them at the deepest levels. Um, and I want to go into that now. So gaslighting is a big part in our own society. We're perpetuating it as women, gaslighting around this topic. Your menstrual cycle, this time of the month, is about you being able to feel all that you feel and release. There are beliefs that women bleed on the earth and that's why we don't participate in wars and battles. Men go and they slaughter and they kill each other. 
women bleed. And, but we're the crazy ones, right? So, um, you know, the, is, there's a thought behind it that it's the blood that's paid. But I want to look at it as in a pragmatic way right now. You know, you can do some research into the depths and the spiritual reasonings behind it. But I want to I wanna present this in a way where you can maybe present it to someone else if you want to. You are meant to feel everything that you feel during your cycle. And you're meant to allow yourself to feel it. This does not mean taking it out on other people. It does not mean attacking someone else. It means deeply validating what you have not paid attention to throughout the rest of the month because you were so busy being masculine, taking action, making things happen, putting aside those little feelings. Nope, 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 that doesn't make sense. And doing what you don't wanna do anyway pushing down your needs and just smiling through things. When you start to get towards your cycle, all of that hyper-masculine energy starts to pull away and your feminine who feels, who knows, who has intuition, who has deep information for you that she's been trying to share with you throughout the month, she is palpable during this time. And I believe that the more intense the disorder, the more intense the um, pain and the feelings around the menstrual cycle, again, I'm not a doctor and I'm not here to tell you what's right or wrong for your health, just hear me out. It That shows a deeper and deeper disconnect with this part of yourself because the more painful something is, the more it's trying to get our attention. And that doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It just means you haven't been given the information to validate yourself, listen to yourself, trust yourself, and learn to navigate through this time in a way that's beneficial, like deeply beneficial to you in your entire life. Um, in, in most indigenous cultures, in many indigenous cultures, I don't know most, I haven't studied all the indigenous cultures, but it's very common that when a woman gets her cycle, she is celebrated and there is a ritual and she really learns and understands what this time means. In our society, we don't have that. So this is just kind of happening to us. It's this gross thing. It's this thing we don't really understand. It's this thing we're gonna have to put up with. It's this thing where maybe we're gonna crave chocolate. It's this, it's this empty sort of burden put on us instead of this absolute magic that it really is full of potential and it's like we're handed over this power uh I don't know when you guys got yours I think I was 13 or 14 it's a little bit later than most a lot of people it's 12 or 13 I was handed this power and told nothing about it it's like being handed a machine gun and not being told what it does or how to use it it's it's like being handed a magic wand and not being told it's magic that's, that's really what it's like. It's like here. Oh, the stick that I have to carry around? Okay. But actually, if you use it properly, it's magic. And it's not this inconvenience for you to carry around. <sighs> so what can we use our menstrual cycles for to help it work to our advantage? We can go inward, okay? Your menstrual cycle is not a time for making choices or taking action. It's not a time to be masculine. Action is masculine. It's not a time to be masculine. Decision, masculine. Not a time to be in that masculine energy. We all have feminine and masculine energy. We have to use, learn how, when, where, and how to use it properly. It, during this time, you want to allow yourself to be deeply in your feminine. Nourish yourself. Sit down and journal your feelings. Not your stories. Not what you're making your feelings mean. Not what you're making anything mean. But journal what's really happening in your life. 
and your feelings right now and validate them, even write it down or look in the mirror and say, I validate you for everything you feel. You could even do this process in front of the mirror instead of writing it down. Start to find a practice that resonates most deeply for you and you're only gonna find that by trying it out. You can sit there and you can say, okay, I feel fucking overwhelmed right now. I feel revved up or I feel just so freaking exhausted. I feel confused, I feel anxious, whatever it is, and say, I fucking validate you. Yes, you do feel that. I got you, I got you. It's okay that you feel that. You've felt that in big and small ways throughout the month, and it's getting felt fully now so it can be validated, and so it can release, and so it can process fully. A lot of times, the emotions that get really built up during our menstrual cycles are the ones we haven't validated for ourselves during the, the fullness of the month. So we push down the overwhelm and we just drudged ahead. And guess what? When we get near our cycle, all of a sudden the overwhelm is like, it's all we can feel. Are we pushed down the sadness and said, nope, my life's fine. I should be happy and invalidated a deep inner need that we told ourselves, I don't need that, I, my life is good, I'm happy. So all these emotions you're feeling are actually indicators of what you've been invalidating for yourself. And I can't express enough the difference between story and fact and how you need to know the difference. So. For example, if your husband isn't spending enough time with you, the story, the fact is he's not spending that much time with me. He's not spending as much time with me as I'd like, or maybe he really pulled back and decreased his time with you. The truth of that is he's decreased his time with me. So that's fact. The story might be, he doesn't love me anymore. He's not that attracted to me. He's seeing someone else, this, this, and this, and this, and this. The stories you make up around it aren't what I want you to validate. I want you to validate, I'm not getting the time I need with this man. I'm not getting, I want more time with him. Yes, I do. I do want that. Um, I need more nourishment. Yes, I do need more nourishment. This time of the month is when all those things you've disregarded and all the ways you've thrown yourself away and disregarded yourself are now coming to the surface. And, you know, if you're prone to anger during this time of the month, it's because you haven't had good boundaries. And you haven't validated the anger you felt. Someone stepped on your toes and you're like, oh, it's fine. It's fine. I'm a girl. <laughs> it's all good. I'm sorry you stepped on my toes. <laughs> And women, oh, I could make a whole video on this. Women live in apologies. I am saying this all the time to women. I'm like, don't apologize for taking up space. I'll walk by someone in the gym and I have to gently step around her and she'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I'm like, don't ever apologize for taking up space. And they always look at me like, what? And it's the way women are bonding with each other too, is to apologize for their existence. And I've experimented out in the world with this because I'm not a person that apologizes all the time. And um, when I do, if I go into that, oh, I'm sorry, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm getting my you know credit card out to pay the cashier and it's taking me a second. I'm so sorry. Oh no, it's okay. No, it's fine. Like there's this like, connection women have for apologizing for taking up time or space or existence and they kind of soften and play back and forth in it like oh look at us we're in our roles of apologizing for our existence <laughs> and then you go out into the world and you don't apologize for yourself and people are just kind of like whoa she can do that she doesn't have to apologize for taking up space or like being somewhere when someone wants to move by them so if you're angry a lot, you're probably one of those people that's like, sorry, oops, sorry, oh my gosh, I messed up, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not saying we don't need to apologize, but we don't need to apologize for a lot of things that we are apologizing for. So you can look at a lot of the emotions that are 
more than likely to come up during your cycle and really trace them and go, okay, this is a valid emotion I've been put, pushing down and I need to let it be felt, but don't validate the story validate the feeling and the need. I need, we're gonna go back to the husband thing. I need more affection and nourishment. I'm not getting what I need from my husband. Validate that, that's just gonna soften everything. That's fucking true. And then don't make up a story. I'll never get what I need from him, this or that. Start thinking, how can I meet my own need for nourishment more? Maybe I'm putting too much energy on him and here and here and here. And I could take 10% of that energy and start feeding and nourishing me in the way I want him to. And then is there a way I can communicate to him when I'm in a space of action and communication that I do need more and how important it is to me and how it would make me feel if I had more. Boom. And you know, it's when you're out of that super triggered place that you can start taking action and making requests to other people. You can take that action of nourishing yourself right away because it's, it's you and you, but um, you'll know very clearly action steps when you're out of that hyper feminine space of the menstrual cycle. You'll know what you need and you'll know where you need to meet that need where you need to pull back your energy and focus on you and where you need to ask for more from someone else. So you see, you can use this to your advantage to tune into yourself and stop disregarding yourself. Stop pushing your wants and needs and true feelings to the side because they're illogical in this hyper-masculine do-do-do world and start nourishing yourself on the deepest levels. And if you're experiencing a lot of pain, like you've got cysts or you've got all these different things, that's probably some deep um, female trauma within your line. Look at past life regressions, look into hypnotherapy, look into some deep inner healing work. Because if you've got those cysts in there, it cysts often feel like anger and resentment and things that are built up and uh, it could be around sexuality, it could be around feminine empowerment, it could be around anything for you. But um, irregardless, pain is pain. And so if you're feeling pain during your cycle, it might be an indicator of the pain you haven't processed, whether it's in this lifetime or previous or what you're holding um, in the feminine line. Uh, but you can always start by saying, okay, what pain have I not processed? Um, what pain am I perpetually putting myself through so much so that it can never process because I keep adding to it. Uh, pain is always trying to show us unprocessed pain. So this is a supremely uh, powerful time for you to feel your feelings, to journal, to do mirror work. Um, and you can still function, you can still do what you need to do, but just slow it down a little bit and bring more of your energy into you and it's going to benefit you and your relationships and your family and your career and every part of you and really keep you in alignment with the truth of who you are and stop you from gaslighting yourself your whole life thank god for this thank god we bleed thank goodness these things come up so we don't just become completely shut down or get drug into being full on masculine in this world. Take to take the time to tune into this and you are going to see a big shift in your life. Anyway, please uh, remember to like, uh, share this video, comment below, engage, uh, let me know what your thoughts are and your experiences and your epiphanies and um, take really good care of yourself and get that journal out and trust yourself. Oh shoot, I closed the video out too quickly. That was the big message. Trust yourself. Trust yourself. Again, don't trust the stories you make up. Trust the feeling and honor that that feeling is showing you there's an unmet need. There's unprocessed stuff. There's ways I been shutting myself down or apologizing for myself that I need to stop. 
and trust yourself during this time. Trust that you can sit and journal and feel and you can scream if you need to. There are some times during my cycle, I will go for a drive and I will scream in my car and let that energy move. And I just love me for that. I love that I can do that. And I love that all the clarity and the peace that I get afterwards, because I'm trusting that, and what you're trusting is that this does need to come through, this does need to process, this does need to be felt, and that you have the capacity to do it and to nourish yourself through it and enjoy the ride. And I really, um, I enjoy my cycles. I can feel when they're coming, there's this little kind of twinge feeling where it's like, okay, it's about to happen. Um, I usually kind of get this revved up energy a few days before so I can get a lot of things done. And I'm able to honor my emotions and I cry more and I feel more and I'm just in awe of being so connected to, you know, everything from the tragedy to the beauty of life, to being able to encompass and to feel all of that. So you are magical and I just want you to remember that.